to another video interview brought to you by AI Chemies Online Community Connected. My name is Anton Middleberg. I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor of Research and International at the University of Queensland and Editor in Chief of Chemical Engineering Science. I'm here today with Professor Max Salou. Uh, Max is the President and uh, Vice Chancellor of the University of Surrey in the UK, and he's been selected as the 2016 Dunkworths Lecturer um, by the sponsors. The Dunkworths Lecture is co-sponsored by AI Chemie, I Chemie and the European Federation of Chemical Engineering and by the publisher of Chemical Engineering Science, Elsevier. Max, welcome. Anton, thank you very much for your introduction and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, the title of your talk, your Dunkworths Lecture, is Engineering Nanocrystalline Photocatalysts for Energy and Environmental Applications. These are two of the biggest problems for humanity and energy and environment. Um, going forward, and you speak in that lecture about the developments in oxide nanomaterials for conversion and storage of renewable energies for the future. Can you tell us a bit about what new and improved properties uh, you've worked on, particularly around the asset design and so forth, and um, what we can expect to see with these materials in the future? Right on. Thank you uh, for the question. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, how to improve the uh, catalytic properties of uh, photocatalysts, Photocatalysts, uh, as we know, is uh, semiconductor nanoparticles uh, that uh, would uh, actuate uh, on uh, a light uh, irradiation to generate electrons and, uh, and uh, holes. So, with uh, the uh, uh, technique to uh, create uh, different facets, which has uh, enhanced the properties for uh, light absorption and uh, gap. Uh, gap uh, band gap sort of uh, shifting, so you can improve the whole spectrum of solar energy utilization. So I guess that's the new property. Basically, you can uh, use crystal uh, engineering to tailor the band gap so that uh, you will have a small photons across the visible uh, spectrum. So that's almost a new field called band gap engineering. It is. Uh, you, you can call it band gap engineering because. Uh, uh, in uh, photocatalysis, it's very important to tailor the band gap mm -hmm. to suit particular application. Yeah. For example, if you want to harvest uh, the photon energy across a wide spectrum of the wavelength mm -hmm. into the red, into the visible light, you need a narrower band gap semiconductor as a photocatalyst. Yeah. Uh, so when you achieve such an uh, improvement in the fundamental properties, mm. the band gap narrowed and then the absorption to light uh, is enhanced. Mm. And therefore, you can hope to uh, uh, generate uh, more electricity for solar cells yeah. or indeed uh, to achieve higher reactivity if you use the uh, uh, photocatalyst for uh, uh, organic uh, degradation reactions, for example. And that uh, 2008 paper that really showed that shift to the O01 facet uh, in processing uh, was quite a breakthrough and has been built on a lot and cited very heavily uh, since your original work. Um, how do you think ultimately that breakthrough and other developments in nanomaterials are going to help with um, advances in solar power utilisation and uh, chemical generation, for example? I, I think it's uh, quite exciting. It will help. Uh, we are already in a subsequent work mm -hmm. To that nature paper, we already improved the uh, solar cell efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an alternative solar cell to the normal PV yeah. uh, solar cell. Yeah. It's called the grazer cell. Yeah. So you can uh, use uh, the uh, uh, titanium nanoparticles with more 001 facets mm -hmm. to improve the uh, uh, photon energy harvesting and enhance the solar efficiency mm -hmm. uh, of the uh, grazer cell. So that is one uh, promise of this kind of uh, uh, nanoengineering or uh, nanostructuring of uh, the photocatalyst can do. And I guess the challenge for the future will be for material scientists work to work with chemical engineers to do the band gap engineering work that you've shown is possible, and also to figure out how that changes with scale up and process development work. That's a very good question. I think uh, definitely when you scale up to make into a system or, or device, mm -hmm you need to consider the whole system design, the whole system design, the process involved, yeah. how to optimize. I think that is where uh, material science meets chemical engineering. Yeah. That's uh, something that uh, uh, requires a lot of collaboration uh, yeah. to make a real improvement uh, in, in the uh, commercial products. And do you think there's also a big opportunity there for some of the supercomputers? 
computer work to be built on? I know you did a lot of very detailed chemistry computation work, and do you see that as an enabling for the future as well? Yeah, absolutely. In terms of the, uh, in, uh, you know, to how to improve uh, the properties of uh, uh, nanomaterials, and in, in the case that I'm talking about photocatalysts, mm. you need to be able to design from the uh, first principle first. Mm. Therefore, you require the collaboration of the computational chemist uh, who use supercomputers to, to simulate, to model the energetics of the materials. And then you're going to, uh, you know, through uh, experimental uh, investigation, you realize the uh, uh, optimization or the yeah. improvement. The reality from the computation. That's right. Yeah. So you, you require you know, the, uh, the close you know, collaboration between the uh, uh, theorists, mm -hmm. if you like, or those people doing a lot of calculations, modeling, and the experimental researchers. And if, to wrap up, if there was one message that you wanted to uh, leave to young professional engineers going into nanotechnology, uh, what would that be? Well, I would say uh, find your passion. Um, you know, whatever a topic you are passionate about, and, and trying to understand the topic in a bigger context first, mm -hmm. relate to the big picture. You know what uh, if, if you, you know what difference you will make if you make a breakthrough in this area uh, and then start with the fundamentals mm -hmm. and try to uh, zoom in to understand what's been done what's the gap and uh, how uh, you know you can develop a new technique or new theory to improve and why you think it will improve mm -hmm. and then uh, you know work on how yeah. so once you've done that you come back again to ask you, know, you achieve some remarkable results and then ask questions, so what was mm -hmm. the implication for the future? Yep. So I guess that's the loop you have to The loop and yeah, the application right. of the so knowledge. Yeah, yeah, that's right. From what and why, how and to, yeah. to so what? Yeah. And I think this is the key question to focus on. Yeah. I think if you keep at it, you know, working hard towards the goal, um, you you do well in uh, which area, uh, whichever uh, topic you, you yeah. choose to work in. Well, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts today and also for delivering an outstanding Dankworth's lecture. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.